I am ready for a bit of fun today with 10 gig networking using Thunderbolt 3 that this Dell Precision 5510 laptop is equipped with. Much like Dell XPS 13 and 15 machines. Yes, there's a USB-C port. And yes, it gives you Thunderbolt speeds over that physical interface, the uh, long round oval. Now we're looking at, or I was looking at, the network speed um, the physical adapters of the super server that's right over here, a little bit off camera, you can probably hear the fan. And I'm going to give you a live look as I plug this Thunderbolt to N-Base-T Ethernet adapter. If you're not familiar with that term, that's another phrase for RJ45 gigabit, 10 gigabit, excuse me. So there it is. Now I'm going to unbox it, plug it in. We'll see if the drivers just download and work. Uh, I am Wi-Fi connected, so pretty typical for a Windows 10 machine to be Wi-Fi. And if it finds a wired connection, well, it should cut over to that. Nice enough box. Let's see what's on the bottom. Uh, not much. All right. Pull tab. That works. Warranty. Quick start guide. And what do you know? Thunderbolt cable. Nice. So that's it for the contents of the box. <clears throat> I don't think the warranty will be too interesting to read other than, let's see if I can find the, uh, okay, three years. That's helpful. And quick start guide tells me to connect it and connect to a network. Well, that seems kind of straightforward. And this thing will support the new 2.5 and 5 gigahertz or all the way down to 1 gig. So that means if you have a consumer switch, and a bunch of them are expected to come up soon, uh, right now it's late July 2017, you should be able to choose consumer priced 2.5 and 5 gig switches as well as 10 gig. Now I have a Netgear switch, I also have this Asus uh, 8 ports plus two 10 gig ports, so these blue cables are 10 gig. Uh, it doesn't really matter. As long as they're Cat 6A or Cat 7 cables, you're good for 10 gig networking. These happen to be the monoprice slim runs that everyone uh, likes when I've demoed these publicly and asked about because they're so thin. <clears throat> All right. Get the cable liberated here. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in and we're going to look at the first connection together. All right, a bit of a tamper-proof seal. Well, it's not that tamper-proof. All right. There it is. It's actually smaller than I was thinking it might be from the packaging materials there. Come on, focus. There we go. 5 volts, 3 amp. There it is, in 4K glory. Yeah, a close look at the physical device. So think of this as kind of a huge dongle with uh, air flow through there. See a little bit of light? Well, yeah, maybe. All right, and we're going to get a fan symbol there? What is going on? I guess an LED to show me the fan is operating? I don't know. We're about to find out. Little rubber feet are a nice touch. So if it's in an office or something, it shouldn't... Uh, come on, focus. Slide around too much on you. Yep. Rubber feet work. All right, here we go. Uh, I need to situate things so you can see. Let me start with, uh, I'll grab a blue cable to be consistent with my cabling scheme here. And that way when it plugs into the machine, we'll have something to look at together. So there we go. Blue cable. Okay. Now, let me think about this. Yeah, first thing I'll do is just plug into one of these network switch ports. Uh, let's see. If we look at the switch here, 
You can't tell the difference between 10 gig and 1 gig. Uh, here's a 100 that has only one green, but two greens. So that's, well, that makes it a little trickier. But uh, on screen, I'll be able to show you the connection to my vSphere host upstream. So I'll actually just directly attach the cable. So, since this is not going to do the trick, I'm going to go with borrowing a port from here and hooking straight up to the server. Eh, let me just move along here. All right. Um, we'll go with 10 gig first, borrowing from the server. All right, just at the top of the camera frame. That should work. Okay, and then this ugly thing hanging off the cable. Thunderbolt cables tend to have that these days. Plug this in, all right, and then leave it so you can see the LED lights. Cool. And then finally, plug it in without blocking the camera. <clears throat> okay, now at this point I think device manager would probably be pretty handy. So let me bring up device manager. in a way that you can see as it finds the network adapter in the foreground of the camera shot there. Okay, network adapters are showing. Hopefully you can kind of see that. And well, if you got a 4K monitor, you can. Here we go. Volume of the laptop should be cranked a little bit so you can hear plug and play device manager recognition. All right, we have or uh, Amber here. We have device manager jumping a little bit. And now we have a Thunderbolt approval screen. That is normal. If you have your BIOS set to ask you when you're connecting to a device, it says promise technology wants to connect. I'm gonna say always connect, meaning I trust that Thunderbolt device that I just plugged in. Now it should show in device manager. Ethernet controller, so it's saying other devices Ethernet controller, so it appears I have a little more work to do. Now I am Wi-Fi connected like I mentioned, and I'm going to wait a little longer and see if it automatically grabs a driver. But I have a feeling since it hasn't already, uh, we're not going to get a driver yet. Now what's this doing? Um, the physical ink layer, nothing, completely disabled until I get a driver. It's interesting. How about here? We've got a bright green LED indicating what looked like a fan, but I sure don't hear anything, so I don't know. All right, so Windows, update driver software, search automatically. Let's see if that works. This is Windows 10. Probably figured that already. Unable to find it. It's not Creators Update, by the way. Okay, here's the Windows driver from March 10th of 2017. Pretty new product there. But not a super new driver, considering it's now July. Maybe the driver they came out with is fine as it is. Who knows, we're about to find out together. Running the executable. Let's get some clutter out of the way here. And we see Windows unable to do your Ethernet controller, we know that already. Fine. Now let me show you the wizard on camera. I don't have Camtasia on this laptop, sorry, you're just going to have to make do with that camera view you've got. But you get the idea. We Google for the driver, downloaded the Windows EXE, running the EXE, and with any luck we should see Device Manager jump, and it just did. Yay. Okay. Promise Technology, Sandlink 3, T1, showing up. Still no lights. So maybe I didn't answer that Thunderbolt question early enough? I don't know. When I click Finish, does it prompt me to reboot or something? No. Okay, if I have a look at the driver. Ah, the lights came up. Okay, just took a few seconds. The driver is April 24th, 2016. 
Uh, that's a year ago. But it's working, so that's cool. Ten gig. There it is. Ten gig success. Right there. So it worked. Uh, that's cool. So, so far no compatibility issue with this particular switch. Next up, physical adapter view. So now I'm plugging straight into the server and you can see it's complaining that one of the switches, uh, one of the actual speeds are down. Uh, let's see what happens. I see one green, I see a second green. That is a good sign. Let me look at the back of the server, which has color for the link layers, and it's showing green, which indicates 10 gig. This particular server uh, uses green to indicate 10 gig. So on the server side, it's looking good. How about the user interface here? Yep, it lit up. And no, it didn't. It still says down for actual speed. Hmm. All right. Now, there's no DHCP on this network. It's just isolated, right? I directly attached the cable. But we should at least get the link layer going, and it did. I didn't hit refresh or F5 or anything. Just needed to wait patiently for a few more seconds. You know, I didn't really mention why you'd want 10 gig in a laptop. Well, when you have a NVMe slot on a motherboard like this that's underneath this keyboard, well, it can do really fast transfers. And this laptop doesn't even come with 1 gig, so you need an, ad an adapter. So going 10 gig lets me move data to and from the Xeon D over on the right here that has two 10 gig interfaces nice and easily with my Netgear uh, 10 gig capable switch. Uh, still kind of pricey. I'm sure hoping all the prices on this stuff comes down soon. But that's it. That's the gist of it. NVMe drives inside here and the server over there mean I can actually make use of beyond 1 gig speeds. So that's why I was looking at this in Link 3 from Promise Technology. You know, a bit silly of me. Of course you'd want to see me do a file copy. So what I did here was set up a virtual switch. And let me show you those. So if I go to configure, and you'll see under virtual switches, I made this thing called a V-switch. And it's 10 gig. Alright, so hopefully the resolution is sufficient for you to see that. Anyhow, what I then did was took a VM that I had up already, Windows 10, and went ahead and right clicked Edit Settings, and right now it's on VM Network, the regular one, the 1 gig network. Over here on the right is the server, and here's the network switch where we've got two 10 gig ports, one for my laptop here in the front, hooked up via this adapter, and the other going right over to one of the two gig 10 gig ports on the motherboard there, uh, labeled 3, VM NIC 3. Okay, so network file transfer. Here we have a machine on the right, which is the VM. It's a network share. This is the IP address of that. And I'm just going to move an ISO file over to it. All right. And you will see getting 112 megabytes per second. Okay, so that's our speed. And it looks like it says it's taking about 45 more seconds. So now you get an idea of what one gig can do. So, again, seems a little insane at first from a laptop, but you know what? It's been a decade we've been at one gig, and I've got 10 gig in my home now. Uh, should I be leveraging it? So watch what happens next as I move this running VM from the one gig network to the 10 gig network. So right now this 10, uh, one gig side is busy, and the 10 gig side isn't doing anything yet. I didn't look at a stopwatch, but I could review the video and see how long that took. Seems like it took about a minute. All right, so now it's time to reassign the NIC. Right click, edit settings, change from network VM network to VM network 10 gig. Click OK. Copy the same file. And replace. Whoa. <laughs> 850 megabytes per second. So, 
That difference was rather apparent, that's just the network share. I didn't do jumbo frames, I didn't do anything fancy, and I'm actually going to a VM. This is not a physical uh, Windows instance installed over here. It's a Windows 10 VM installed uh, with ESXi 6.5 Update 1 Hypervisor that came out uh, a couple days ago running on it. So, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with this adapter. So that's it. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and for visiting Tinkertry dot com.